Hi, welcome to MarioCast, the piano podcast. I'm your host, Mario O'Hara. Not too long ago, I did a video podcast on how to play about four measures of the song Clocks by the British group Coldplay. And I was really surprised at how much uh, feedback that I got, positive feedback that I got from that little short under five minute uh, video piano lesson. I decided to syndicate it and put it up on YouTube.com and Google Video. And on YouTube.com, it already has received over 2,600 views. So I'm really appreciative of all the people who went to uh, go ahead and view that and post comments and email me feedback on it. You can see even that uh, some sites even link the video and put it up on their own website or blogs such as ilearnmusic.com. Uh, there's the Stingy Scholar blog and there's a, also another blog uh, called mycoldplay.com. So I thought I'd share a few other Coldplay piano riffs that aren't too hard to do. And I'll start with one of their older songs, the one that I played at the opening of this podcast, and that's the song called Trouble from their album Parachutes. So if you look over here, I transcribed again about the first four measures of the song Trouble. So in the left hand, it, the first harmony that's being suggested is G major. If you're not familiar with these particular terms, that's okay. I'll be going over each of the notes uh, individually as well. But it uh, starts off with a G major. In the left hand, I just play a fifth between G and D. And then I repeat the D afterwards just to kind of fill in the gaps. I'll show my hands in about a second here. Right after that, I follow it up with an E minor in first inversion. And this is, uh, in the left hand, it's only played with G and E. And again, I do the same thing. I uh, play the E twice with the thumb and hold that out just to fill it up. And then the next measure, we have B minor. I play first the B and the F sharp. And then I play a D to fill in the harmonies right after that, an eighth note right after. And you hold that for the whole measure. And then in the third measure, third full measure that is, you have the same thing as the first full measure. You have the G and D fifth. And then you have the G and E. And then you have the, um, again, the same thing in the uh, fourth measure as the second measure, the B minor. Uh, which is B and F sharp, followed by D in the middle. So let's take a look at my hands and see what's going on there. So for the first uh, G fifth, you want to put your fifth finger, your pinky on G and your thumb on D. And you play it like so. And then to get to the E minor first inversion or the G and the E, all you have to do is slide this thumb one note over to E and you play this. Then the next harmony is the B minor, uh, that is B and F sharp, and then you fill in the D in the middle with your third finger. Okay. So let me review those two measures again for you. Here's G and D, here's G and E, and here's B and F sharp, fill in the D in the middle, and that's repeated again in the third and fourth measures. Got your keyboard, you can play along with me. I'll play both hands, but if you want to just try the left hand, that's okay. One, two, three. So how about the right hand? Well, if you take a look at the music here, the main motive or the main musical idea, that short musical idea that is utilized in the right hand is are these four sixteenth notes, um, which are F sharp, G, F sharp, and D. Okay, and in a row they sound like this. Now what happens on in between, that of course varies uh, from measure to measure. So in between these 16th notes, 
uh, you have this long dotted eighth note on B, and that's followed by another short B uh, with a sixteenth note, and that acts as a little bit of a pickup or lead in into the next group of sixteenth notes. And that's repeated again here on the third beat leading into the fourth beat. So the first full measure or pickup into the first full measure sounds like this. And then you end it on a half note there at the end. I usually sneak in a little B minor chord there in between that first half of the phrase and then the next phrase that we're going to get into here. Make sure you play it really soft though. You don't want it to kind of just jump out right at you, but you just kind of sneak it in there in the background. And then you play another B pickup into a 16th note pattern, but instead of playing the F sharp, G, F sharp, D pattern, substitute the F sharp with an A. Right? So you end up with that. And then the next two measures are the same. repeat back to the very beginning of the phrase, you play that B pickup again. So let's look at our right hand and how that fits in on the keyboard. I would put your fourth finger in your right hand on F sharp, and then that should let you have your fifth finger naturally fall on G, second finger will be on D, and then your thumb will cover B. So you should cover these four notes with those respective fingers. And that should allow you to be able to play the first full measure, like so. Now when you have to play that A on top, you just have to do a momentary shift in hand position so that you end up with your fifth finger on A, fourth finger on G, third finger on F sharp, and your second finger and your thumb stay on D and B respectively. So you're covering that for a second, and you'll end up with this. Right? And then you shift everything back to the way it was in the very first measure, like so. So now that you're feeling pretty good with the right hand, or maybe not, uh, why don't you try playing the right hand along with me while I play both hands, both left hand and right hand, but you guys can just try the right hand here. One, two, three. time and you can take a look at both hands to see how it all fits together. I had a few people send in some email and comments, and I'd like to share a few of those with you. This is from Amir. He says, I just downloaded your Clocks podcast and was wondering if you could do more of those with other famous songs, especially Coldplay ones. One I would really like to see is Speed of Sound. If that's possible, that would be great. Thanks. Well, Amir, yes, I think I can oblige you with that, and I'll do that on either the next podcast or some future video podcast. This is from Jelmer in the Netherlands, and he saw my video on video.google.com. Jelmer got out an old keyboard that they used to have and says he can now play clocks a bit, but it will be better because I will pre practice frequently. Metal Huey on YouTube.com says, This video was spectacular. If only more people could teach like you. I look forward to seeing more of your videos with more pop songs or even something classical. This video deserves to be featured. Terry Bush also from YouTube.com says, Thank you for taking the time to do this. Really helpful and really appreciated. Well done. 
And finally, Jason from the UK writes on my blog, just came across this video at Google Video. Very cool. Now I'm forced to buy the sheet music because of you. As an idea, you should look into monetizing your site by adding AdSense or something. Just a thought now that I'm inspired to buy stuff. Thanks for the advice, Jason, and I really didn't get into this to make any money off of it. However, if I'm inspiring viewers like you to uh, buy, you know, certain sheet music and songs, well then why shouldn't I get a little cut of that action? Rather than using Google AdSense, I decided to use Linkshare and become a Linkshare partner with uh, uh, the iTunes Music Store and also MusicNotes.com. So if you go to the right hand side of my blog or web page, you'll find these two new links under Link Share Sponsors. One is for the iTunes Music Store and another one is for MusicNotes.com. So if you buy any music from either of these online music stores, then a percentage of those sales will go to your very underpaid music teacher. I'm also going to use Linkshare for individual products that are directly related to specific uh, podcast content. Let's say you wanted to buy a recording of the song Trouble. Just go to the blog slash podcast post. You can click on either of the two iTunes badges, one to buy the actual digital audio song and one to buy the digital music video. And then yay, I have some spare change to buy like a cup of coffee or something. Right underneath that you have a link to purchase the sheet music to the whole album of Coldplay's Parachutes and that contains the song Trouble. That's from MusicNotes.com. MusicNotes.com also has a digital sheet music version of the album and I put a link to that right below and yes it's all legal. That'll do it for this episode of the Piano Podcast. Until next time, keep practicing.